In order to understand how to improve confidence, we must first understand what lack of confidence is. Here's the deal. Lack of confidence could often be translated as a combination of high self-awareness and low exposure. Or in other words, you are overthinking your flaws while not exposing yourself to new experiences. Let me take you back to my own journey, something many of you might relate to. During my teenage years, I struggled immensely with social interactions. Talking to people felt like an impossible task. I couldn't even walk past someone without feeling a rush of anxiety. As if every step I took was on a public stage under the judgmental gaze of an invisible audience. At the gym or in other public places, if I heard laughter, my first thought was that it was directed at me. Questions would flood my mind. Was my outfit okay? Was my hair a mess? This anxiety spiraled to the point where I couldn't muster the confidence to do simple things like asking for directions. I used to be paralyzed by fear. But then, something happened that started to change everything. My grandpa, who was my closest friend since childhood, became seriously ill and unfortunately passed away two weeks later. Around the same time, my two best friends, who were a year older, moved away to attend college, which meant I was completely alone, isolated and lonely. To cope with this loneliness, I realized I needed to find people to spend time with. So I started researching deeply into social dynamics and self-improvement. This process led me to completely different lessons about life and personal responsibility. After that period, my confidence didn't just grow. It skyrocketed, improving every aspect of my life. I went from blaming others and my circumstances to rapidly improving my situation on my own. Now, you are maybe wondering, how did such a transformation happen? Well, I developed practical strategies that allowed me to burst from my insecurity bubble. And today I will show you how you can elevate your own confidence and improve your life using the seven strategies I discovered during the years of research and experience. And those seven strategies are, build a character, knowledge is power, exposure and experience, self-care, the value of planning, mastery, Flip the frame. One, build a character. Who do you want to be? What do you imagine yourself to be? A confident, calm, charming, seductive, funny, and outgoing athlete. Or maybe just a chill, quiet, but a confident businessman. You have to decide how you want to present yourself to the world. And from that decision, you can determine what areas you need to work on. Think of it like creating a character in a video game where your tools are knowledge, action, and experience. By actively working on these aspects, you can shape who you want to be in the world. Two, knowledge is power. The more you know about a subject, the more capable you are of handling related challenges confidently. Consider this scenario. You are walking in the woods when a snake crosses your path. Because you are knowledgeable about snake species, you recognize that this particular snake isn't venomous and not aggressive towards humans, making it safe to be around. Your certainty and understanding give you the confidence to remain calm in the presence of a snake. On the other hand, without any knowledge about snakes, you would likely feel scared and uncomfortable in this situation. Remember, knowledge is directly tied with confidence. The right knowledge sheds light on the right steps you need to make in order to succeed, which directly benefits you in life. Best way to obtain knowledge is through direct experience and deliberate research. Three, exposure and experience. Start small to finish big. Another crucial aspect of building confidence is that it can't be built by remaining in your bubble and by avoiding difficulties of life. On the contrary, it can be only built through exposure and repetition. To truly overcome your fears, it's important to face them head on and not run away from them. This concept is not just about confronting fears, it's about habitual interaction with them until they no longer hold power over you. Take for example, a common fear of dogs. The most effective way to conquer this fear isn't by avoidance, but by gradually increasing your exposure and interactions with dogs. 
Avoiding the things that scare you might seem safe in the short term, but in the long run, this only reinforces and potentially grows your fears. Over time, you will discover that the more you are exposed to these situations, they are far less intimidating than you initially thought. In other words, start small to finish big. Four, self-care. Self-image is an essential aspect of human interactions. Dressing well, smelling good, and behaving in a way that will project an image on the person you are talking to matters. Humans are visual beings, after all. Whoever tells you that confidence doesn't have anything to do with external qualities is lying to you. Without a debate, confidence is internal and external, which means the better you feel in your skin, the more confident you will be. Basics such as having a good perfume, a suitable hairstyle, clean teeth, and being well-dressed will help you in the long run. Five, the value of planning and preparation. Directly tied to knowledge and self-care, having a concrete plan is much better than having none. Planning is a vital tool for managing unexpected events effectively. So if you want to be confident, you have to have some sort of plan. When you plan in advance on how to approach someone, what to say, and how to handle a negative response, you're setting yourself up to make fewer mistakes. Consider how a president prepares for a public speech. He plans what to say, how to say it, where to look, and what to wear. Essentially, he's preparing to project a certain image. Preparation isn't just helpful, it's essential for gaining experience and enhancing your performance. Basically, build a certain plan on what to do in case things don't go as planned. Six, mastery. The problem with the majority of people is they wanna be confident, but they literally aren't good at anything. Confidence doesn't exist without a good foundation. While the fake it till you make it approach may offer temporary confidence in certain situations, genuine confidence is like a superpower that comes from being really good at something that will actually benefit you. Why fake that you can talk confidently? when you can actually practice and master communication. There's a saying I like, whatever you do, you get better at. When you're really good at something, you feel secure and there's no way around it. Take a firefighter, for example. Their confidence in fighting fires doesn't come from acting tough or faking it, but from years of training and experience. That's why it's important to focus on getting really good at what you do. It not only makes you better at it, but it also gives you strong, lasting confidence. Seven, flip the frame. One of the greatest threats to confidence is becoming too fixated on specific outcomes and setting unrealistic expectations. When your self-esteem depends solely on achieving these outcomes, every setback can feel like a personal failure, leading to significant confidence issues. Much of what we agonize over is really just in our heads hence why it's crucial to step back and view challenges from a broader perspective. Remember, ultimately, we all share the same fate. We will not be here forever. With this in mind, ask yourself, that mistake that you are overthinking, would it even matter on deathbed? The fear of stuttering during a presentation or not successfully flirting with someone you find attractive might seem monumental at the moment. But in the grand scheme of life, these are mere blips. When doubt and insecurity cloud your judgment, try this simple exercise. Close your eyes and envision yourself at life's end, looking back at these fears. You'll likely find yourself smiling at how inconsequential they truly were. So instead of obsessively focusing on outcomes, start accepting things as they come. Conclusion. Who are you and what will you be remembered for? These are important questions to consider. When you're not sure of your identity or what you stand for, the world will define it for you. Hence why it's crucial to find your why and let it drive you forward, even when every fiber of your being resists. This is how you grow your purpose, self-worth, confidence, and life. Remember, you are creating a specific character with every decision you make as you are dictator of your life, and you can definitely improve whatever you want as long as you act on it every single day. Stop letting life happen to you and let yourself happen to life. With this in mind, have a wonderful day and take care.